they have like favorite keepers? Can you tell that they like people? Hey, good morning, Lift Up Lou and folks joining us from our Louisville Zoo Facebook page. We're here at Lemur Mountain. We're going to get started. Uh, uh, we've got our educator Katie Morrison here with uh, for you for questions for uh, our Facebook page. I'll be behind the camera. Just type your questions in and we'll get to them. This new software we're using has a little bit of a lag, so be patient with us and bear with us as we get to your questions, but we'll get to them as soon as we can. Enjoy. All right, Katie. All right, guys. So we have three ring-tailed lemurs here at the local zoo. These guys just came out to get a little morning snack. They've got some grapes and some nice leafy lettuce, looks like here. They might have a couple other things that are a little harder for us to see. Uh, we have these three boys are our only lemurs. Their names are Paul, Ivan, and Faust. They are all 29, which is pretty old for lemurs. The median age lemurs get to in a managed system like a zoo is typically 19, and they can live up to their early 30s. So these guys are getting right up there at the top of what you can expect to see for lemurs. And they have been together for their whole lives, so they are a good, friendly group. Uh, because they are older, they're not as active as you might see with younger lemurs. They like to just eat their food and kind of hang out. They're not going to be doing too many acrobatics or anything. This leafy lettuce is pretty typical of their diet. They get a very veggie heavy browse heavy diet. I think we've talked about browse before with the hippo last week. That's those um, leaves and the sort of tender shoots from tree branches. So it's stuff that you would find higher up, not like grays, which is more like hay or grass. Uh, they also like to get some fruit. And because these guys are a little bit older and their teeth are a little bit more worn down, a little more fragile. They do eat cooked vegetables too. So anybody out there who's gonna have some cooked veggies for their lunch, ooh, they're gonna get a treat. They get to have dried fruit like craisins every so often. So our, one of our keepers day is down there giving them a little craisin treat, which is pretty, pretty fun for them. Uh, they like those kinds of sugary fruits. You gotta watch out though. Just like humans, animals can't have too much sugar. And all of the fruit that we feed them here at the zoo has a higher sugar content than fruit that they would find in their native habitat on the island of Madagascar. So we watch out for that. And keep good track of what we're feeding them. Uh, does anybody have any questions yet? I don't have any questions just yet. in a little while so I'm not super great at telling them apart and I especially can't tell them apart from the back they all look kind of the same to me from their backside we've got Jesse here one of their keepers who could maybe mention the descriptions of them do you mind I don't mind uh, okay so uh, right there in the middle who uh, he's days walking up to him right now that's Ivan and the easiest way to tell Ivan apart from the others is he looks like he's gotten um, eyeliner that goes from the inside corners of his eyes down to his nose. And he's the only one of the three that has that. And then next to him on the, the left is Faust. And Faust is kind of about the same size as Ivan, but he doesn't have that eyeliner. And then Paul is on the far right hand side right now. And Paul has got kind of a bigger head and generally in the past has been a little bit bigger than the other two boys. 
Um, and Paul there, he's got a little bit of a droopy lip. It's hard to see from here. Um, and he also has a bit of a cloudy right eye. And those are from uh, uh, injuries he sustained years and years ago. He's not in any uh, sort of pain or anything. It's just uh, the way he looks these days. So uh, those are the easiest ways to tell the three boys apart. Um, it's, it's a little easier when they're all next to each other and looking at you. Uh, it's a little more difficult when their backs are to you, like she said. Do they weigh about seven pounds? They weigh between five and seven pounds. Uh, is, is a nice, healthy, average weight. And just like us, some of them are on the higher end and some of them are on the lower end and they just kind of naturally have larger or smaller uh, builds. Paul has always been on the higher end, a little bit bigger and stouter, whereas uh, Ivan and Faust have been on the more average size lemur boy scale. I have a few questions coming in from our own Facebook page. Okay. Uh, Miss Michelle wants to know how long they've been at the zoo. Have they been here their entire lives? I believe they came when they were two. Again, that's something I'd have to look up to be sure. Uh, so but I think that is when they came, when they were all around two years of age. So they're 29 now, which means they've been here at the Louisville Zoo for more than 20 years, which is a pretty, pretty long time. Uh, Nicole would like to know, did they used to be at the goat enclosure? I don't think we've have ever they always had been lemurs. In the they, they've always been there, in this space, yeah. but there did used to be goats on this mountain previous to the lemurs being okay. here. Okay. Oh, so this is what formerly was Goat Mountain. That's probably what you're thinking, Miss Nicole. Uh, Danielle wants to know how old they are, which you just mentioned, 29, yes? Yep. And Andromeda, uh, any news when the zoo will reopen? Um, Andromeda, we are uh, obviously paying attention to the current events, and when we know, we will certainly share that news. Mike wants to know what's going on with the woolly monkeys. <laughs> the woolies are actually in retirement, yes? Yes, they are in retirement. They live uh, out behind the giraffe barn, so you might be able to see them if you get a chance to look at the train tracks from the parking lot. I think you can see their enclosure a little bit that way if you can tell which one the giraffe barn is from the very back side. Uh, and if you crane your neck when you're on the warthog side of the giraffe barn, you might be able to take a peek at them that way but they are like these lemurs in their top age range and they have gone into retirement to enjoy the last few years of their lives oh, really? hey folks on the lift up loop page do you have any questions for us well. mm -hmm. <whistles> yeah, so maybe in... we should talk about where they're from oh yeah so lemurs are Pretty cool. These guys are found only on the island of Madagascar and a smaller neighboring island that I'm gonna just double check the name of because Comoros. I keep forgetting. Which Comoros. Com I can't. <laughs> Fred's gonna tell you. Fred's joining us. <laughs> the Comoros Islands. <laughs> okay. So Fred knows, which is excellent. It takes uh, a village, everyone. <laughs> and there are just over a hundred different lemur species. So like a lot of animals that evolved on islands, they got very, very specialized. So there is a lemur that lives in almost every kind of habitat that eats almost every kind of food. These guys, ringtail lemurs, spend a little bit more time on the ground than other kinds of lemurs who prefer to live in trees. They tend to eat a lot of leafy greens, like we've said, uh, but there are other lemurs that eat insects. Uh, one that's called an eye eye has a, a very long finger. I've got I've got a challenge for us. Okay. See if you can count the number of Stripes. of the bands that they have on their tails, and we'll come back and answer that later. See if you can get it. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. We have we do have one question, and Excellent. maybe Jesse or or Don could answer this one. Um, how fast are they? Are how they fast? fast are they? Oh, let's see. Are they fast? Do they run? Well, Miss Day. These three gentlemen are not very fast because they are senior citizens. Oh. Um, but. These guys are super fast when they're um, swinging through the canopy. So um, they are prey animals because they're smaller, so they would need to be fast. And that's uh, also why they spend a lot of time up in the trees because they can stay away from predators that way. I have a question. When we're here at the zoo, we see them kind of chilling out in this kind of yoga-ish pose. What is that? I 
<laughs> not right now, but often we see them doing uh, that. They do. They tend to have a kind of a um, yoga Buddha pose going on sometimes, especially you'll see it mostly when it's sunny. And that is a way for them to just kind of warm up and it feels nice. Just like we do if you kind of stand and face the sun and it feels nice and it stays nice and warm. Uh, it's just a very comfortable, warming, relaxing pose. Um, and perhaps maybe we even picked up some of our stuff from watching them on occasion, how, how to relax and chill out. <laughs> Is there, is there a little front here, a little bit shorter too? I wonder if that's a warmer spot. That they yeah, it could be. Um, they also have scent glands on their chest as well. Um, they do that stink fighting where they'll run their tail through the scent glands and then throw their tail at each other uh, to throw the scent at each other. Um, My brothers and I tried that when I was younger. <laughs> tried to outstink each other and that's what they do. Maybe we got Especially it teenage boys. Yeah, right? I didn't know um, you had a tail. <laughs> Just the but yeah, they, they, that's a nice spot for them to warm up their whole body, especially, you know, when we're trying to stay warm, you kind of keep your core warm. So you warm up your chest and your body and then your extremities will stay warmer as well. And so that helps them to uh, take that warmth in because it is a warmer area in Madagascar. Um, so it doesn't, you know, get down as low there as it does here so especially for these guys when they're feeling a little chilled if the sun's out they will take advantage of that to warm themselves up this is jesse so you have a face and to the voice, voice jesse <laughs> and this is day so you have a voice and a face to match hi day hi. <laughs> sorry for the camera shaking these guys are moving pretty quickly we're trying to stay on a tripod but sometimes that's hard and depending on the weather, it's still a little chilly today, so um, they do like to be warm. And it looks like Paul's still hanging out, I think. Mm -hmm. I have to look and see who that is. But um, with their advanced age, they do prefer a lot of times to be inside and stay where it's nice and warm, unless it's nice and sunny and warm outside. Uh, so with this overcast day, it wouldn't surprise me if they kind of hung out inside. Even though they have the option to come outside, we give them that option. Um, but just with their advanced age, they tend to prefer to be inside these days. I have a couple questions for you. Um, Trisha would like to know how they use their tails. Do they use them for anything? They use their tails for balance as they're hopping along the mountain or in the trees. And uh, that is their main use. But they also use it, like I said, for the stink fighting. Uh, so they'll take that tail and they'll pull it up in between their arms and they'll hold it up against their chest and, and their scent pads, and then they'll pull their tail out and then swing it at each other. And that takes that, their own personal scent and throws it in the direction of whoever they are trying to throw it at, and that gives them information. It tells them to back off, it tells them this is mine, whatever they're trying to relay. Um, animals use a scent quite often to relay information and that is one very good way that they do that. They'll, they'll also come up to things and you'll see them, they also have little scent glands on their wrists and you'll see them rub their wrists and then their chest sometimes onto things. And that's just a way of marking things that's theirs and uh, so that everybody knows. So they definitely use that tail to uh, talk to each other, throw some scent, and then especially for balance as they move around. Another question coming about, are they warm weather animals? Like what the temperature has to be? To yeah, uh, we have temperature guidelines for almost all of our animals here at the zoo. And for these guys, uh, if it's below 40 degrees, we do keep them inside um, just for their safety and well-being. Uh, and then if it gets above 60 degrees, we can lock them out for a short amount of time. That way it, we know it's warm enough. It's if it's at least 60 degrees that they're nice and safe outside. And then, uh, but they also have a high temperature guideline. So if it gets above 90 degrees, we always give them a chance to come inside and cool down as well. Uh, and then, especially with our advanced aged uh, geriatric crew we have here, we are lack, really lax on those numbers. So if we feel like an animal is not doing well at 86 degrees, we will by all means give them a chance to come inside, relax, cool down. Uh, we are not super duper strict with those, especially when animals are uh, young or very old or, or maybe have health conditions that we need to monitor. Uh, so with these boys, we, we really kind of uh, 
baby them a little bit and uh, treat them with uh, special gloves and make sure that they are happy pretty much all the time because uh, they, they, they deserve it. So. I have a couple questions coming in about um, mating and babies. When is the last time they've had babies? Uh, I don't believe, uh, and I, I could be wrong about this because I've been here for 17 years, and I know for the 17 years I've been here, there have been no babies with our lemurs. Um, and I don't know that we've had any breeding with lemurs here at our zoo. If they did, it was uh, many, many years ago, um, maybe back in the small animal. Before 23 years yeah. ago, maybe that's how long I've been. Yeah, so before 23 years ago, we have had a couple females, but right, we've, we've had some females, had but there was never any breeding for at least the last 23 years. Um, and then I, I don't know what the future holds for that. I can't speak for that. So Trisha had a question about: Can you smell their scent? Are they like skunks? Not really. Uh, I have never noticed a big smell. Um, then again, I don't spend a lot of time with my nose up close to them either. Uh, we all have personal space and we give that to our animals as well. They do allow us to come up and do things. Um, we can touch them so long as we have our gloves on and masks on and um, we give them something for that. We, we don't expect them to allow us to touch and do things with them without getting a reward. Um, you know, for me, someone gives me a piece of chocolate, yeah. I'll give you a hug, <laughs> but uh, for these guys, you know, we just have to figure out what they like and what's their, their things that they enjoy. And a lot of times it is like craisins and so forth. And that allows us to get close to them. We can inspect them in case anybody has any uh, injuries or anything. Um, they, they're usually very good about letting us do those types of things. Uh, but I've never noticed a big scent associated with it, so I'm kind of glad for that, to be honest. <laughs> so for those of you just joining us, we're at Lemur Mountain with some of uh, our lemur keepers and some of our educators. And we have a question coming in from Cole, who's age five, uh, and he wants to know a little bit more about the tails you just mentioned. Um, okay. He just joined us, so he may have missed the tail conversation. That's okay. Why do they have such long tails? Cole, that's a great question. And they have long tails to help them balance. Uh, so as they travel through the, the trees and along the ground and along even rocky areas um, where they're found, it's balance is very important. And just like um, you ever see trapeze artists or people who walk on, on high wires, they have these long poles to help them balance. And those tails help them do that as well. So, uh, and then Depending on the lemur, the different tails will look different. They have different colorations. Ringtail lemurs, they always have that striped tail. Um, and that helps them to see each other and communicate. And then again, they will put the stink on those tails and swing them at each other for information. Uh, and uh, they also make lots of loud noises when they do these types of uh, behaviors as well. Well, we certainly thank Paul for staying out and hanging out with us. <laughs> we do have two other lemurs, Ivan and Faust, but they seem to have uh, wandered around. One um, of my favorite parts of uh, the sort of lemur social aspect is that the it's the the females that, that rule the yeah. The, yeah. the lemur social social part. They're the ones that eat first. They defend things and. They get the first uh, drink. Sometimes in their, their place where they live, it can be quite arid. So like little water holes and things that might be in a hollow of a tree, they get to do it first, which is not typical. So if there's usually an argument, the females do the winning of that. Well, that brings a question up of mine. So we have three males right now. So without a female, does that, what Fred was talking about, does that affect their behavior? Um, they, they do definitely have different behavioral um, Things that, yeah, types. Uh, now, with the, the just being the boys, there's no girls to fight over, so that at least is one less thing to fight over. Um, and they have personalities, absolutely. So Paul down there has kind of always been our really good eager eater. He's not been very picky in, in the past. Um, he's always kind of been the biggest, but he hasn't always been the most in charge. Um, like I said, a few years ago, he was he did have a, an injury, and we had to separate him uh, while we uh, while he healed, and we had to keep him away from the other two boys while, so that they wouldn't injure him uh, of the, the healing process. And when we were having we were introducing them back together again, uh, Faust was very eager to be with his friend Paul, 
and Ivan was less eager to be with Paul. So it took us um, a little extra time to, rem to remind Paul and Ivan that they were pretty good friends. Um, <laughs> and they did remember eventually that they, they got along and, and they have since been, been good with each other. Uh, but um, sometimes that, that distance does make a difference. And especially if you have any um, members of the group or the troop uh, pass away or leave or anybody new come in the deny the dynamics between individuals can change um, So when we lost our last black and white rough lemur Bruce many many years ago um, After he passed away the dynamic between these three boys did change and we had to monitor that and we actually even did some adjusting with their diet to lower sugar amounts to help with aggression issues that we were starting to see that we had not seen before because things had changed socially. So uh, definitely they've got their personalities and, and we monitor on a daily basis what's going on between the individuals and uh, adjust accordingly. And they had lots of uh, vocalizations. Wasn't, Day, weren't you gonna imitate one of them for us today? Oh, wait. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Well, while, while, Day's, get, while Day's getting her, her. I think I think Jessie's got that one down. Oh, I'm yeah. more of a kookaburra girl. I was gonna say, you got the kooka. <laughs> Someone is asking about how they can support the zoo during this time. Um, thank you, Andromeda, for asking that question. We we have our LouisvilleZoo.org slash together, which you see at the bottom of your screen. And uh, there's a lot of information about how you can support the zoo, renewing your membership, offering a, a gift for us. We thank you for thinking of us, and we do miss you. Uh, we've got a couple more questions coming in for you guys. Thanks for asking that question, Andromeda. Dalton, age three, would like to know what their favorite food is. Um, Carrie would like to know, Carrie who's age four, would like to know do they run and eat lettuce? And then Darcy wants to know if they climb well. Uh, yeah. So they do climb pretty well. They can hop around on this mountain and they'll climb on the branches that we have for them. Um, Ring-tailed lemurs are not as arboreal, which means they don't like to live in trees as much as other lemur species. So they spend a little bit more time on the ground than some of the other species because we mentioned this earlier but there are more than a hundred different species of lemur so if you can think of a behavior there's probably a lemur that does it uh, they do like to eat lettuce and they will if they're hungry they might run for it our lemurs are as we've mentioned kind of older they are 29 which is just about the top age range you can expect from a lemur so they don't really run anymore but they might walk kind of fast if they're especially hungry uh, they eat a lot of vegetables, so lettuce is definitely something that they like. Uh, they really like to eat dried fruit because that is going to be really sweet and it's a treat item for them for the most part. Jesse was mentioning earlier that when they need to be examined up close by their keepers, they might give them some dried fruit like a craisin or a raisin to get them to hold still and come up close so we can see if there are any issues with their bodies or anything going on that we might need to be concerned about. So dried fruit is a good treat, but they do eat lettuce, they eat cooked vegetables. Uh, they like to eat browse, which we talked about last week when we were at the pygmy hippo, which is those tender shoots and leaves on trees, not like grass or graze, which is gonna be like a hay. These guys love mulberry, fresh mulberry at the beginning oh, wow. of spring as it's coming out. It's one of their favorites. Excellent. So it's 11.25, we should probably start to wrap up. Does anybody want to add any last minute? Oh, we're losing Paul. No, Paul, stay here. Uh, anybody want to add any last minute things? Oh, I don't think we ever answered the how many oh, bands yeah. they Oh, have we didn't. There. You're right. Good yeah. call. Oh, I'm and losing Paul. Let's see. The answer was 13. 13 bands. Yeah. That's cool. Okay. That's good. I've never counted their bands. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, thanks for joining us here at Lift Up Lou and on our zoo's Facebook page. Don't forget the zoo has uh, Facebook Lives Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday at 2. And, of course, Lift Up Louisville here on Thursdays at 11. Tomorrow we'll, we'll be with John, our director, John Walzak, at the, uh, at the elephant exhibit with Fitz and Mickey for a quick check-in. And on weekends, don't forget, we've got some recorded activities for you and your families. Thank you so much for joining us. We miss you. Social distance, wash your hands, stay well, and we will hopefully see you soon. And we will see you tomorrow at 2 on our Facebook page. Take care.